welcome to the long-awaited, much-requested micro crochet tutorial. I am finally getting around to this. People have been asking me for a tutorial about micro crochet for the last about a year at least. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Jemima and I run Cup of Coffee Crochet over on Instagram and also on Etsy. Uh, so today I will be walking you through the steps that I took to start micro crochet and all of the tips and tricks you need to get started on your own. These are perfect for making jewellery, whether it's earrings or little pendants for necklaces. Um, people also love to make arigurumi, which also can be made into earrings or put in like little jars, they're really cute. Uh, I don't personally make arigurumi, so you might have to find another tutorial for that, but this will give you the basics to start if you find a pattern and then you can start making those through that. Um, if you need, I've put chapters down below in the description um, and also they will be on the timeline. Uh, so this is what I will be uh, covering in today's video. So I'll be going through tips and tricks for getting started, uh, what materials you will need and other supplies, um, and then specifically um, techniques and ways to hold the yarn, ways to hold your hook, um, and anything else that goes with actually making the crochet. Um, and then at the very end, we'll go through a tutorial, which is making a little granny square, um, because a lot of people already know how to make these, so it will be nice simple tutorial hopefully for those of you out there um, and if you don't know how to make a granny square you can just watch I will just talk you through the steps. Um, I will note though that this tutorial does assume that you already know how to do basic crochet. Since micro crochet already uses the same stitches and all the same techniques as larger size crochet I won't be going through actual how to actually do the stitches. Um, if you are new to crochet, that's absolutely no issue. I will put some tutorials down below for you to follow. I would recommend doing those first in like a yard, larger size yarn, maybe go purchase just a really cheap ball of yarn and a hook um, and just get really confident with those stitches first and then save this video for later and come back and revisit it once you're confident with those stitches. Um, I'd recommend at least learning uh, chaining, um, slip stitches, single and double crochets um, and maybe just how to make a simple granny square but again I go through it in this video so it's, if you don't know how to make a granny square that's fine. Um, I will also mention that any crochet terminology that I use in this video is the US terminology as opposed to the UK terminology. Um, if, you, if you're not sure what the difference is I'll put a little chart here of what the difference is. So a single crochet in uh, in the US terminology is a double crochet in the UK terminology. Sorry, I just had some issues with fold storage. I had to delete a bunch of things. Yeah, okay, I think that sums up the introduction. Um, why don't you grab yourself a drink? I've got myself a coffee here. Um, and let's get cozy and get started. Okay, so to start off, let's talk, start talking about tips and tricks. You love crochet. Um, but you want to expand your horizons a bit, maybe make it a bit more portable. Micro crochet is great for taking it places because you can take it in a tiny little box. This is all I take with me when I'm going out on the go. Um, but how do you get started? Um, so the best thing I could recommend is that you start just making your crochet smaller. You start buying yarns that are thinner, um, but start buying smaller hooks and just gradually get smaller. That is not what I did. I went straight into working with very fine sewing thread. So this is where I started. This is with the thinnest sewing thread, just cheap thread that I could find. Um, not bad by any means, but it was frustrating. I got so annoyed with how it was turning out. It wasn't how I thought it was meant to be. I also didn't realize that this thread was way too small for my hook, which is why it looks so gappy and not at all what I wanted it to look like. Um, and yeah, it totally worked um, and you can ab absolutely do that if that's what you want to do, absolutely go for it. Um, I'm not here to <laughs> judge, I did the exact same thing, but I just personally think it would have been a better journey if I had just gradually gotten smaller. So maybe going from uh, a yarn where you use a six millimeter hook to a yarn that you use a three millimeter hook and then down to a one millimeter hook and then down gradually lower than that. And also just have started with a thread that was bigger because I don't even use thread that small anymore. So um, also in terms of getting started, you definitely need good lighting. Um, that is a must, especially when you're starting off and you're just not quite sure where the where all of the stitches are and where you're putting the, your hook next. Um, 
And don't start with dark threads either. I would recommend starting with quite a light thread because it's so much easier to see where your stitches are going and so much easier to see where all the gaps are that you're meant to be putting your hook in. If you need one, I would also recommend using a either magnifying glasses or a magnifying glass. I don't personally use one, but if you do have trouble seeing small things, definitely try not to strain your eyes too much um, until you get better at knowing intuitively where it is going to go. Um, I would definitely at least recommend starting with magnifying glasses um, once you do get down to the thread level, because they, they are small. <laughs> um, I think that's all the tips I have for getting started. Um, yeah, so just to reiterate, just start small, start bigger, get smaller, um, good lighting, uh, and magnifying glass or glasses if you need them. Um, yeah, so let's talk about materials. Um, so obviously, same as crochet, you need a hook and you need some yarn or thread um, and also some scissors to cut them. Um, and if you choose to, you can also use a needle to weave in your ends. I don't personally use a needle, but that is totally up to you for your preference. Um, I will get into how I weave my ends in when I get to the, the granny square tutorial at the end, um, so we can go through that. Um, so to talk about hooks. Um, I have an array of hooks here. Uh, so the one I use is by the brand Pony. Um, it is a six millimeter hook. Um, I will try to insert some B-reel footage here. It is a very small hook, um, obviously meant for very small crochet. I tend to prefer the ones that don't have a grip handle. Um, so I go for the ones that are just the metal handle. Uh, I know that hurts a lot of people's hands, it doesn't personally hurt mine, but um, if you are after something with a little bit more ergonomical grip, uh, you can get ones that do have a grip on them. Uh, so this one's quite a popular brand, um, and that one is a 0.5 millimeter. So I don't personally go that small because the yarn I use doesn't need that small of a hook. Um, but yeah, you can totally get ones with these. You can only get them in, as far as I'm aware, you can only get the hooks in metal because, because they are so small, they need to be quite strong. So obviously something in wood or plastic wouldn't be as strong enough to have a um, the end of it be so thin. Um, so yeah, definitely you can only get them in metal. So I just know that some people prefer, don't like metal because it is quite slippery, but I don't think that's really an option there. I think they are all going to be metal. The quite popular brand is called Clover. I think it's a Japanese company. Um, these hooks here are also Clover, I think. I bought them when I was in Japan when I broke my, my poor little crochet hook. I snapped it in half by accident by, uh, I bent it and then tried to bend it back into shape and it did not go so well. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have also found through my journey that a lot of the hooks might have the same might say that they're the same size but there is some differentiation in size such as the 0.6 millimeter hook that i bought in japan compared to the one that i'm used to um there was i don't think you really see it on camera but i think one feels like quite a lot thicker um and the same with i did buy another um i tried one out with a grip as well and this one felt way too thin so it just, you might have a little bit of trial and error. So what I say I use and find perfect for the thread that I use may not be perfect for you if you're trying a different brand. And also it's all just a personal preference and there is a lot of trial and error, unfortunately, um, especially if you're working with sewing thread, since sewing thread isn't a crochet thread, they don't have, they don't list an appropriate crochet hook size for the threads um, that you buy as opposed to where if you buy a crochet thread, they will have a suggested crochet hook size that you can use with it. But um, if you are using sew sewing thread, just be aware that it may be a little bit trial and error. You might have to buy one or two hooks before you find something that you like working with and that works well with what you're making. Um, and another note in terms of crochet hooks, they are sharp. They are essentially needles with a hook on the end. Please be careful. <laughs> Don't be like me. I am notorious for putting my hook down once I'm finished with a round and just putting it in my lap and forgetting where it is. 
please just keep track of your hooks if you know of the creator Steffi Glaves. She's on Instagram um, and she is actually who got me into micro crochet in the first place. I bought her book, uh, 100 Micro Crochet Motifs. Um, and that's how I learned to crochet and micro crochet. Um, if you don't know her, please go check her out. Her stuff is amazing. Uh, I also really recommend this book as well. There's really lovely stuff in there. And she sells a lot of her patterns on Etsy as well, I think. Um, but yes, so I'm from reels and videos I've seen of her crocheting. I know that she tends to crochet with a band-aid on her middle finger. And I assume it's just to stop the, have a layer of protection from stopping the hook going through her finger. Um, so yeah, it is a bit of a risk, but it's fine once you get used to it. Just please be careful when you're starting. Now we've gotten through that, let's talk through threads. Um, so there is any number of threads. The one I personally use is Gudemann's. Uh, top stitch thread. Uh, I think its, pur its purpose is usually for uh, top stitching on a heavy fabric, so it's a lot stronger. It's also a lot thicker. So it comes in these little green spools. Um, it is a polyester thread, which I'm not a fan of. I would much rather be crocheting in um, in cotton. I think they do make this thread in a more either. A recycled polyester or in a cotton but I just can't buy it where I am so I'm working with this at the moment I would also love to try and find an alternative in a crochet thread but I again I just haven't found a good alternative um, as of yet so we're working with polyester at the moment um, so yeah it comes in these little green spools um, uh, and it comes in 30 meters or 33 yards per spool so it is a little bit thicker as you can see uh, I'll compare it to a, a just a um, cotton thread in a moment, but yeah, it has this quite good texture to it. Um, when it when you crochet it up, it has a lot of um, rigidity. It sort of ke helps keep its shape when you crochet it quite tightly, um, which I really enjoy uh, compared to sewing threads, which don't keep their shape nearly as well, unless the you were doing it really tight. This is what I bought when I started off. That's what I made my first motif out of. Um, yeah, very thin, uh, not a good idea. <laughs> Please let this video be a bit of a warning of don't start this small. Um, absolutely, you can get that small eventually, but um, I personally don't think it's worth it to start with. It was very tricky. So yeah, as you can see, the top stitching thread is about um, two or three times the size of just the normal sewing thread. So it is a lot easier. Um, there is a lot more definition to the stitches. Um, there's no, uh, because it is polyester, there's no fluffy, like fluff effect or uh, what do they call it? Like peach fuzz effect around the outside of it. It holds its shape. It's just a really lovely um, thread to work with. You can also buy lots of different crochet threads as well that are custom made for specifically for crochet and for making projects like this. So I do have a couple sewing uh, crochet threads. Um, so you can get them in various sizes. Um, this one being a little bit thicker. Um, and this one, like you can get them for really cheap. I think this one was from Daiso um, for about two or three dollars. Um, really cheap and pretty good like quality. They come in some fun colors. This one's variegated, so it makes um, quite a different um, motif from what I could make with thread because the thread just comes in solid colors. Um, I also bought this one. Um, I was trying to find a duplicate um, when I was visiting my family back in Australia. Uh, I thought this one was close to what my thread is, but I think it's still about twice the size of what I normally work with. And I just prefer um, working with the sizes I've got because I'm so used to them by now. But yeah, where I am, there's just not really any available crochet threads, but you might have some really great stores near you. So absolutely go check them out. Um, they are often in cotton, um, which I, I think is preferred um, generally, just because it's a little bit more environmentally friendly. It's got no plastics in it, but obviously I guess polyester has the benefit of lasting a little bit longer. Since I haven't really experimented with cotton before, I don't know how well it would keep its shape. So again, like a little bit, a little bit of trial and error involved in um, using those, but uh, obviously it's all just down to personal preference of what you prefer, um, and that's fine. Um, I guess the only downside I've found to top stitch threads is that you are a little bit limited by colors. Um, in saying that, they still have about like 80 colors, I think, maybe. Maybe not that many, maybe 60. Um, so yeah, I've got them in these <laughs> great big, um, very satisfying um, bins here. 
Um, but yeah, I have found that my creativity is a little bit limited because of the color range that they have. Um, there's not that many like greens or oranges, that kind of thing. Um, but there is a still great range um, and I still managed to make some really great color combinations, but just wish there was a little bit more. I always look at the, the cotton sewing thread color range, which has about like 300 colors and I just get really jealous that I can't use those in my creations, but so be it. Um, I still love the thread to, to crochet with. I think it's great. <laughs> And finally, let's move on to a bit of a tutorial and let's talk about how to hold your yarn and other techniques that I use and important stitches and things like that that I use in my everyday crocheting journey. Uh, so let's move down to a top-down view. Um, I will get myself set up and let's get started. Hi, editing Jemima here from the future. Um, I just wanted to quickly mention that I have put the written pattern for the granny squares down in the description if you would prefer to have that beside the video and read that along with um, the tutorial. Mine is a little bit different, so just in case um, you get a little bit lost in what I'm doing on the video. Um, it is quite hard to show on video, It just because the crochet is so small, um, it is a little bit hard to show it exactly what I'm doing. Um, so yes, the written pattern is there if you need it as well. Let's get on with the tutorial. Cool, so I have my colors here. I have my 0.6 millimeter hook. You can see the tip of it a little bit better there. Um, something I didn't mention in my previous uh, instructions is that I recommend getting some pointy scissors just because you can get a lot closer to where the thread comes out when you've woven in the ends. Um, so you have uh, you don't have ends sticking out um, when you cut them off, uh, and you just get a lot more precise just so you aren't accidentally cutting the stitches elsewhere on the on your work. Uh, I also recommend getting a little bowl, um, anything from the kitchen will do, just uh, something with a rim. And I like to use these so that you can put the thread in there, um, especially if you're working with something on a bobbin like this. Um, obviously, if you have it in a, uh, a more of a ball of yarn, then I've, you don't necessarily need this, but definitely if you're working with one of these spools, um, it works great that you can just pull it and it doesn't run away from you across the table or off the couch that you're working on or anything like that. Cool, so I guess first that we need to learn how to hold a thread. Um, so it's very similar to how you would hold your yarn. Uh, so you just wrap it around your fingers to create the tension that is desired. Uh, one thing that you really want to achieve in micro crochet is if you're making anything like this, you need a really tight tension just so it holds its shape. Otherwise, if you have quite loose tension, you'll just end up with a lot of drape, which is not um, what you want to achieve necessarily. If I assume if you've come here um, from Instagram or you saw my thumbnail, you want to achieve something similar to mine, where you want to create little uh, motifs for uh, jewelry. Um, so you want to keep it quite structured. And to achieve that, you need really tight tension. Um, so I'll show you how to achieve that. So the way I hold my yarn is holding my palm out flat. I will first wrap it around my pinky. So we go around in between those two fingers there. And then I go back across my palm and then I put it in between my pointer finger and my middle finger. And then I wrap it back over the top. So I'll just go do that again. So around my pinky. So between those two fingers there and then back over between these two fingers here and then back over the top. So you've got the end of your thread here. And one more time just to show you. So across over my pinky, back over my fingers and then between these two fingers here. And you end up with this. And then to create tension, I wrap my fingers down like this. So it really grabs the yarn quite tightly in my pinky there. You can see it pulling on quite tight. And then when I'm working with stitches, which I'll show you later on once we have some stitches going on our work, um, I hold the working stitches uh, between my, my thumb and my middle finger here. 
So this creates a really nice tight tension here. Um, you, if you're working with normal size crochet, you don't really want to be able to hear this, um, but with micro crochet, you definitely want to have tight tension to the point where it sort of makes a noise when you, when you strum it like that. Um, but obviously don't do it too tight, otherwise if you're getting cramps or anything like that, make it don't, uh, loosen your tension a little bit, you don't want to hurt your hands, um, just nice and firm. So I'll just go through that one more time. Over the pinky finger and around, and then back across these middle two fingers, and between the pointer finger and the middle finger, and back over, and then we uh, grip it with all of those fingers by pulling, by pushing them down, and then it's quite grips. Um, the yarn gets gripped between these two fingers quite nicely, um, and then I'll bring this middle finger up with my thumb to grip my working yarn. Uh, it might be easier to see once we have some stitches going, um, so I will revisit this again once we have some stitches. Um, but just to start with, this is how we want to hold the yarn, or the thread, the thread rather. Um, and then holding the crochet hook, I I like to hold it like this, like I would like a knife and fork. Um, I just hold it with the grip here, um, and I like when I'm uh, trying to get quite precise, I can use this finger to sort of guide it. Um, but yes, this is mostly how I hold my hook. Some people will like to hold it like this, uh, like a pencil. Um, whichever way it feels more uh, natural to you uh, is fine, as long as you can get nice precision on those stitches because they are so small and you will need to quite precise um, placement to get into the smaller stitches once we get to the outside rounds. Sweet. Um, so let's move on to the next step, which is creating a magic ring. So for all of my pieces, I start with a magic ring no matter what. Um, I don't think I make anything at the moment in my current designs that doesn't use a magic ring method. The center here is always started with a magic ring, um, which I will show you how to do. Um, if you do this in regular size crochet, um, if you use this technique, it might be a little bit different to how you start it, just because it can be quite fiddly with the thread, but I will show you a great way to um, start the magic ring that uh, is more suited the thread so it won't run away from you and you may end up with stitches that are nice and tight for the center. Uh, and then I'll also show you how to tighten it so that you get um, no gap in the middle. Um, I definitely recommend this method over the three chain method, which I know some people use. I haven't personally tried it, but I don't think it would work very well because just because I think you would end up with quite a big gap in the center and I think it would also be quite fiddly. Um, I think it would be quite hard to achieve with such small, such small thread. But if you were working with a little bit of a thicker crochet thread, it might still work for you. Um, just uh, give it a go and see what works for you. Okay, so to start a magic ring, um, we start by wrapping our thread just like we were before. So around the pinky finger, back over the two middle fingers and over the pointer finger. Except that this, the magic ring has an extra step. So the way I like to do it is that I will twist the thread around my middle finger in order to create the tension, um, and then I work with the yarn over my finger. Uh, so it might sound a little bit weird at the moment, but I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. Um, I have seen people do it with two fingers, but I prefer with one. Um, I'll show you both methods, um, and you can choose whichever one feels better for you. So the method I use is just the single finger. Um, so got our yarn wrapped, I've got these two fingers down to create nice tension, and then I wrap it around twice. So around this middle finger in a anti-clockwise direction, I guess, um, and then across like that. So in the end we have our yarn, it's quite tight here, got a lot of nice tension, um, and it is wrapped around, sorry it's quite hard to show, <laughs> wrapped around my middle finger here. Um, and it is quite tight but it's not cutting off circulation, so it will really leave a mark but it's it's pretty comfortable currently. Um, yes, so this is the way I personally use. I will also show you the way the two finger method, so it's exactly the same essentially, but you just go across two fingers. Um, so you end up with the two fingers wrapped like this and it leaves you a nice gap in the middle But I find that it's unnecessary uh, Personally, and it just uses a lot more yarn than just wrapping it around one finger. So because the thread is um, Kind of expensive. I don't want to waste too much of it. I just think it's a bit unnecessary um, But it's totally up to you. So I'll start with my one finger method and I think um, If you want to use the two finger method, you can adapt it 
to that. Um, so how we start here is that we've got the working yarn wrapped around here. I then go and grab it with my thumb just to secure it. Um, so we've got the two threads here. I'll try and show you a little bit closer. So we've got the two threads here. Uh, one of them is loose, one of them is the end. And then we've also got this thread up here. So what we want to do is we start with the, we start working the thread in under the magic loop. So what we'll do is we put the hook under the thread here and we grab this yarn here with the little hook. Try and get a bit closer for you so you can see a bit better. So we've grabbed that with the hook and we bring it down underneath. And then I like to slip stitch to start just to secure it. Um, so we're working pretty much on top of this finger, uh, sort of on top to, or to the side a little bit. Um, so this is the part that I found the most tricky when starting micro crochet. It feels very unnatural when you begin, but I got the hang of it relatively quickly. Um, but it is, it does feel like you <laughs> have a lot of thread going everywhere um, and that you've tied your fingers in a knot. Um, but yeah, once you get used to it, it's pretty good. Um, and then we'll just start with our stitches here. So we'll grab the yarn and we'll chain two to start. Um, and so that's our first stitch. Um, I always count my chain twos as the first stitch. Um, and then we'll do the second uh, double crochet. So we'll yarn on over, go back under these two loops here and grab back under again and then pull through two and then pull through two and then do that one more time for the first lot of double crochets. So I'll do it close to the camera, hopefully. So yarn over, under all of those loops that are on your finger. I sometimes like to just smooth them down with my thumb just to make sure that they're all on a line and that I'm getting all of them. And then we'll grab the yarn and bring it back under and then pull through two and pull through two. There we go, that's our first little group of three double crochets. Hi, me again. Um, so in the video, I decided that the green yarn was too hard to see, so I changed to a blue yarn um, and then just started fresh without explaining anything. Um, I would just replace the footage with that footage, but I think I explained some things a little bit better in the when I'm working with the green yarn as opposed to working with the blue yarn. So I'm just gonna keep both sections in. I apologize if that's confusing, but I figure since this is one of the hardest steps of getting the magic ring um, down pat, I think it's probably good to go through it twice anyway. Um, so feel free to skip forward a little bit if that's um, if you already have that um, down uh, and confident with it. So um, back to the tutorial. <laughs> okay, so we'll just go through the process once more. Start by wrapping the yarn around our fingers just to create the tension. So around the pinky and back over the pointer finger. And then we like to grab it with your two fingers at the back and then around the middle finger. Um, so we have the working, the end of the yarn here and I will just secure that to my finger with my thumb. And then to start working, uh, we go under these two loops and if it ever um, if you find that you're losing your tension on these ones around your finger, you can always just tighten it again um, just by grabbing this and pulling it tight. So we go under these two strands here and then we're going to grab our working thread. And we're going to pull it under and then slip stitch to secure it. So grab that and just pull it through. And so the, have this little um, loop, funny little looking little loop here. Um, again, you can just pull this thread to tighten it if it's feeling a bit loose. Um, also the same with pulling, uh, pull your pointer finger away to create more tension there if you need to tighten knot. Um, and so then we'll start with our two chains to begin our first stitch. So chain one and chain two. Don't worry too much if this is looking a little bit big. Um, if it is looking too big, then um, maybe try and pull the yarns to make it a bit smaller, but we can kind of these will be attached um, and will be pulled tight at the end um, when we pull our magic ring closed. So it shouldn't matter too much, but still want it to be relatively small. Um, so then we'll create our next two stitches, uh, double crochets. 
Um, again, the, um, the instructions are down in the description if you like, if you prefer written patterns. Um, so, double crochet, yarn over and pull up another double crochet. And then I like to chain three for the corner. Um, so we'll do the next little section. So yarn over and we're going under all of these loops. Pull up the yarn. And then pull through two and pull through two. And then one more double crochet. And just making sure that these are nice and secure. Pull it every so often just to make them nice and flat. And then one last double crochet. Going under all of those three strands. So we've got their first two um, double crochet sections of the granny square center. Um, so we'll chain another three. And then we'll repeat that process again. So another three double crochets. Making sure you're not splitting any of these threads as well because we will need to pull them tight so if you split them it will mean that they won't pull nice and tight um, because some of the threads will be captured so making sure that you have the entire threads as you go under and you're not splitting any of them. Chain three again and then under all of those again and now there are final three double crochets Final three chains. Sweet. Um, and I'll pull that out just so it doesn't come undone. So we've got our starting our center of our granny square here. So these four groups of double crochets will be the center, um, these center four here. So there, my blue on my hook is the orange here. Sorry, I probably should have used the same color so it's a little bit easy to follow on, but I'm doing different color, a different color order, but these ones are correspond to the orange ones here. Uh, so the next step, step is I like to hold this working loop here just so it doesn't come undone while, um, but you are then free to wiggle this off your finger. And so I've just got this hooked around my hook here, just so it just doesn't come undone. Um, and then we are going to tighten the magic ring. So the way we do that is we've got two different loops here because we wound it around our finger twice. So we've got the first loop and the second loop. Um, it's impossible to tell which is which now, but the way we can tell is that if we pull on this, uh, the end of this loop, uh, this thread, we can see which one gets tightened first. So we don't want to tighten this one all the way. We actually want to grab this one and tighten this one first so that we tighten the second loop. Because if we try and tight, just pull this across, the second loop won't get tight. It will get caught and you'll end up with, um, you won't be able to tighten it all the way and get this nice clean closure that this one has down here. So we want to make sure that we're pulling on the one that this one closes. So we're pulling on this one to close the second loop. We want to close that one fairly tight. Um, doesn't matter too much, it will tighten a little bit further once we pull the whole thing together. So once that second loop is tightened, we can pull this thread now and then it will close the second loop. And then we'll just wrap it around our fingers and pull a bit tighter. Don't, um, you don't want to tug on this too tight because it will break if you pull on it um, too much, but just so that we have a nice clean closure. There will often be a little bit of a a center, a center gap in there, but um, as long as it's pretty closed up, um, it shouldn't be too noticeable. And then to finish this one off, um, we'll wrap the yarn around our fingers again. So again, just around the, uh, keeping this one out from the center uh, away. So wrapping around fingers, 
over and then back over the top and then gripping them with the final two fingers and then pulling using this finger to pull this tight so then our loop um, is nice and tight around the hook and then we're just going to finish off the center by putting our hook into that first stitch Just wriggling it in there gently and we'll just do a slip stitch to finish. And then I like to do an extra slip stitch just to secure it completely. And then I'll pull it out the loop. I'll trim this bit between the motif and my finger and then pull the loop out to finish. And then I like to tug on all of the uh, spare threads just to make sure they're extra tight. You can give them a center one a little bit of an extra tug. And now we have our first round. So you can see that that center is nice and tight now. Uh, it will get a little bit more definition as we go around the extra rounds and it gets a little bit more structure, um, gets flattened out a little bit extra. Um, but we have our nice little uh, start of a granny square. Sweet, let's move on to the second color and I'll show you how to join a new color. So the way I like to join a new color is I will bring the thread up and I will create a loop in it. Not tight, I haven't tied it or anything, just a loose loop that I will hold between my thumb and my forefinger. I will then get my motif and then I like to start, um, so there's this corner here. There's this corner here and then the yarn is attached uh, to this part here. So that is the part where the last stitch went in. Um, I will start here. So there will be another six stitches before I get to this join here. I just find this is a little bit easier than working straight into the yarn that has just been joined. So I will also, I will hold both the loop of the new color and the motif in my thumb and forefinger. So they're sitting like this. Um, this one I hold just very gently by the end um, with the last um, end just hanging down and I will sort of push it down just so it's out of the way. Um, and then have it far enough up in my finger so that I can see where I need to put my stitch into. Now I'll grab my hook and then I will put it through where the next stitch needs to go and then I will grab this uh, working thread. I'll make the loop a little bit smaller so it's a bit easier to grab. I'll grab this thread and then I will just bring it through. And that's when I let go of it um, and then I will hold this still with this other finger just while I can wrap my thread to start up um, to get my tension. Um, that and remember to clap, clamp down on them with your fingers so you get nice tension. Um, and then I will grab both both of these ends and and my motif in my thumb and forefinger. So you're kind of grabbing everything so you're free to just, this is just free to be your working yarn. Um, if you lose your tail a bit, you can just pull it down just so you have um, a nice tail. It doesn't need to be too long, just a couple centimeters, um, maybe about five centimeters long. I don't think that's even quite five, but enough to do a couple um, stitches over the top um, as I like to work over my, my ends rather than have too many to weave in because I, I find that that means by the end of it, I only have one end to weave in instead of six. <laughs> Sweet. So we have this nice and secure, uh, we're holding everything between our thumb, thumb and middle finger. Um, and then we're three free to just start our stitches. So I wanna make sure this is nice and tight. Uh, so we'll slip stitch to begin, just to secure that yarn in there. And then I'll chain two. And then with our next double crochet, I will make sure that I'm going over this chain in this chain gap and also over the orange end of this working yarn. So we've got both of them trapped in there and then we're going to pull it back up and then yarn over, pull through two and pull through two. And then one more double crochet to finish that little section. And then chain three for the corner. 
and so we're still working into the same chain space. So I still want to continue working over this orange yarn here. Um, I also find it a lot easier to keep track of my ends if I push them to the front. So if I push them to the front like this and then I hold onto them with my thumb and forfeit, um, my thumb at the front, I can then keep track of them a little bit easier because I can see them. Uh, so yarn over and we'll do the next double crochet, making sure that we're capturing both the chains of the previous round and the loose end. Another double crochet. And one more double crochet. And then I chain one between uh, these two sections just for the side. So we're up to, we've just done that one corner on the green round and we've chained one in between and then we're gonna start on the next corner. So now we wanna capture both of these loose ends because we've reached the point where the last, end, the last round has joined up. So we've now got two ends to weave in. So we're going to crochet over them as we go. So pushing them to the front slightly just so I can see them better. And also making sure I can still see where my hook needs to go into the, for the next point. So yarn over, making sure we're going through the chain space and also capturing those two threads. So we've got a bit of a mixture here that we're capturing um, in this uh, in this stitch. So we've got the two threads and the chain space of the previous round. We're going to crochet over those, yarn over, making sure we're capturing those two threads as well as the chains of the previous round, and one more double crochet. And then we'll chain, chain three for the corner and then bring those threads back around to the front just to keep track of them. Making sure that you're keeping the first thread um, from the center magic ring, uh, making sure you're keeping that out of the way just so you don't crochet that in because that one is nice and secure now. So you don't need to weave in that one anymore. Uh, so we're just keeping the, these, two, these two threads here. So three more double crochets, making sure we're capturing everything. and one chain one for the center. And then we're going to do one more corner crocheting over these, just to make sure they're nice and secure. At this point, since we've got a few stitches over them, I just like to tug on them to make sure that they're nice and tight. Just to make sure there's no bobbles or anything at the back that might be seen. So bringing them back over to the front, just to keep track of them. Three more double crochets into this chain space. Sorry, I know I move my hands a lot when I'm crocheting. I'm trying to move them a little bit less. Three chains for the corner. And then bringing them back over the front. Um, and then three more double crochets. Making sure that this yarn is nice and tight and that you can hear it when you pluck on it. And then chain one. And now, since we have three corners of those, these woven in, I'm then gonna put them to the back because they are nice and secure now. So I'm pretty confident those aren't going to unravel if I cut them. So I've just pushed them to the side, off to the right, just to sort of bend them to keep them out of the way. I don't need to hold on to them once I've done that. They sort of keep out of the way on their own. And then we're going to do the last three, uh, the last corner on uh, without weaving those in. So those are just off to the side, no longer capturing them in my stitches. So three more double crochets. Three chains to the corner. And then 
final three double crochets. And then one last chain for the center. And then we're just going to slip stitch into the first stitch. It doesn't need to be super precise since we're not keeping track of how many stitches are in each, um, just in there somewhere with the first uh, section that we did. Slip stitch that one, and then an extra slip stitch just, just to secure it. Pull that out and leave a decent tail. So just trim it there. And then I will pull this loop out and pull it tight. Awesome. Now that we have a second round, this is what it's looking like. So the stitches are nice and tight. The stitch definition is looking good. Um, we have a lot of loose ends. Um, if you like, you can trim these as you go, but I just find it quite satisfying to leave them all for the end. But I do understand it gets a little bit chaotic with all of these loose ends hanging out and you sort of hard to tell where each one ends and <laughs> where each one belongs. Um, So this is our second round. Let's do the third round. Uh, I actually might chop off all these ends just so it's a little bit less hectic and easier to tell. One moment. Okay, so I've chopped off all my ends that are on the back just to make it easier to see. Um, so because we wove, uh, we crocheted over them, I've just chopped them straight off. Um, there was no need to weave them in any further. They're quite secure. I'm positive they're not going to come out. So just chop them off where they were. So we've only got one working end left that's attached to this round. So we're going to get our next, the color of our next round and we're going to pull up a loop, just a loose loop. And I'm going to hold it between my thumb and my forefinger just to start with. And I'm also going to work into this chain space here that is next to where this is connected. So I'm going to hold this yarn. We're not going to crochet over this yarn yet. We're going to do three stitches before we start crocheting over this one. So I'm going to push it over to the side and grab a hold of it just so it's out of the way. Then I'm going to put my hook into this space here and I'm going to pull up my new color. So just pulling it through that loop and pulling it through. At this point, I will grab onto where it is connected onto this, just so I'm free to wrap my yarn around my fingers and get my tension right. So grabbing onto it with our fingers down there. And I also grab these now and I'll push them to the front just to keep a track of them. And then I will grab onto them with my thumb and forefinger where as I grab onto the motif. So we're just going to work our two chains to start. Uh, sorry, we're going to slip stitch to start and then two chains on top of that, just to secure the yarn. Uh, so that's our first stitch. So we're going to do two more double crochets, making sure that we're working over the pink yarn and the chain space of the previous row. Uh, and then we'll chain one for the space. And then we'll move this working yarn, the tails over a little bit, just so they're closer to this next chain space, which is where we're gonna work into the corner. So we're pushing them over to the front just so we can keep track of them. And it's a little bit fiddly, but you'll get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, so three more double crochets, making sure we're working into that chain space. And also over those two ends. So now we're working over both the orange and the pink end. And three chains for the corner. And then three more double crochets, still crocheting over those two ends. One chain for the chain space. And pull them along again, push them to the front, and then we'll check crochet into this middle chain space. So three more double crochets. Chain one, 
chain one and then we're up to the other corner. Um, so this is the point where I'll just grab these threads, the ends that we have going and I'll just tug on them to make sure they're nice and tight. Not too tight, but just nice and firm so that they're sitting nicely underneath. Um, so again, three more double crochets, still working over those ends for the pink and the orange. Chain three for the corner. And then three more double crochets. Chain one. And I'll do one more section, I think, still crocheting over those ends. So the center section, double crochet three times. Make sure you try not to split your thread. Sometimes you'll only grab, um, if you're working with the top thre thread, um, especially, uh, it has three threads to it. Um, so if you just make sure you're not only just grabbing two of them, you're grabbing three. It was really hard to see because it's so tiny, but I only had only grabbed two there. So I just want to make sure that I pull it up to make sure I'm grabbing all three. And then I sort of just like work it back and forth just to make sure it's nice and neat again. Two, three, chain one, and then I might leave those now. So I'm pretty confident that they've got quite a lot of stitches over them now, so they should be nice and secure. And then we'll work into the corner. So I've just pushed them back to the right hand side, just to sort of bend them out of the way, um, just so they're a little bit more out of the way for my next stitches. So now onto the corner. Three double crochets. Three chains for the corner. Three double crochets. Chain one. Three more double crochets for the corner. Oops. Chain three. And three final double crochets. Chain one, and we're just gonna slip stitch into this first section again. So I'm just pushing, sorry, I forgot to explain this. I'm just pushing my crochet hook into that first stitch there. I don't try and go into the chains. Um, I find it easier just to go into the stitch, which may be a little bit messy, but I don't think anyone will ever notice. It's just a lot easier for me. Um, so yeah, just pushing into that first, the top of that first double crochet. Um, so you've got those two uh, strands on top of the hook as you would with a normal crochet and just pulling it through and slip stitching to finish and slip stitch to secure it. Pull it up, trim it and then pull through that loop and tighten. Oops. Awesome, so now we've done all of our double crochet rounds. Next step is um, I'd like to do a single crochet border, so we'll tackle that next. But it's looking pretty good so far. If it's looking a bit wonky, I just like to pull it gently just to um, loosen the stitches a little bit, make them lay a bit more naturally. Um, and once the border goes on it, we can alter it a little bit further as well. That's what it's looking like so far. Again, nice tight stitches, still, um, it is quite bendy, but it still has quite a lot of structure, even just as it is. 
think it's looking really cute. Let's add the single crochet border. Uh, I will also just trim these ends just to make sure it's nice and clear what we're working with. Um, so I'll give them one nice final tug. Just to make sure everything's laying flat. And then I will trim it nice and close to where that comes out. Um, this is where the pointy scissors come in handy. Awesome, so you can barely see where that came out. Um, it's nice and secure. Awesome, let's work on the final round. Cool, so for this final round, we are mostly going to be working into the stitches rather than the chain spaces. So it's a little bit different for what we've been doing previously. So as with, double, um, as with crochet, we will just be working into these uh, Vs on top here. Uh, so into the actual stitches rather than just into the chain space. So I've pulled up my loop, um, just pulled the loop into my fingers and just holding it with my thumb and forefinger just there, making sure it's not too big. And then I will do the same as we've been doing and I will grab my motif and I'll just push this yarn aside because we're not, we don't need that just yet. Um, and then I will generally go in just a couple stitches before. So that's the final stitch before the chain space. So I'll go into sort of this middle stitch here. Um, so this middle uh, double crochet in, in that center. Just go through the middle there. So just underneath that V, as you would with normal crochet, just a bit smaller. And then I will, I often just work with it just off hanging off the hook here, um, it's just hanging there, and then I will just pull it through, and then I'll hold it with my thumb and forefinger to guide it through. Um, again, just holding that um, so I can get my tension right with my fingers, uh, wrapping it around my fingers and grabbing it with those, and then I will go back and grab all of these threads with my thumb and forefinger just to secure it. So it is hanging off there, and we'll pull it through, and then slip stitch to secure it. So it's nice and tight um, and then I'll chain one extra and then at this point I will uh, pull it back in and then pull it to the front just to keep a track of it and then we're going to go back into that same stitch and make a single crochet. So we have that kind of a little knot to start with um, and then we can just start working our single crochets around. So we're going to be working into every stitch and every chain space. Um, and when we get to the corners, I will explain what we're gonna do there. So just working into every stitch as we go along. So we've got one more stitch before the chain space. And then into the chain space. And then this one gets a little bit tricky because it's kind of hard to see. Um, you can just work two into the chain space. Um, but I do like to try and find the hole that exists in this slip stitch of the previous round. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to show it, but I do just like kind of stab the hook in there until it goes through a hole. Um, so it has kind of gone through a stitch there. Um, it's kind of just found its way through. Um, and then I'll just pull that through again um, and then work my single crochet. And then there's two more single crochets. Um, so this is the point where we start working across uh, over the two threads. So still just keeping them on top um, and then we're going to work over both. So that yarn is sort of grabbing both of those loose ends and just going over the top. And we'll keep doing that around for quite a while. Uh, one more single crochet. So I think I have that right. I have gone into too far across. Um, yeah, so if you make a mistake, obviously it's pretty easy, just as with normal crochet, you just pull it out, start again. So I missed, a, missed my stitch in here, so I'll go back and grab that one. And I've got one more single crochet in that little section. And then into my chain space. And then three more double crochets to work into. It's working into the tops there. This is probably the trickiest bit to see, um, just because the stitches are so small, so you're wanting to go into this little section there. And then the next one, 
It's also quite hard to show on camera just because it is so small. All right, so we've reached our uh, corner chain spaces. So I'm just going to pull the threads, the ends, just to make sure they're quite tight and sitting nicely, which they are. So for the corner, I like to do two single crochets and then two chains and then two single crochets to create a nice sharp corner, as you can see on this one here. I just, I think it looks quite nice when you put it on earrings. So two single crochets into the chain space, still capturing those two loose ends. Chain two. And then two more single crochets into that same chain space. And then this next one is sometimes a little bit harder to see. Let's pull them across um, and then we're just going to cro single crochet again across the whole thing. Oops. A little bit fiddly. And I mean, if you do miss, if you don't quite get the threads in the right place, the stitches in the right places, I mean, it's so small, no one's ever going to know really, just as you're learning and getting used to where everything goes. So we'll single crochet across, still capturing those loose ends, and then we'll capture them until the end and then we'll crochet normally again after that. So we've reached the end. Um, I'm pretty sh um, pretty confident those are nice and secured now. So I'm going to push those ends to the side now, and we're just going to crochet into this corner. So two single crochets, two chains, and two single crochets. single crochet across again. Oops, I don't think I did that one right. You can sort of pull it across, um, pull it tight, just it sometimes makes it a little bit easier to see where the stitches are going. I apologize if the lighting isn't great on this. The sun keeps disappearing. making sure everything is nice and tight as this uh, single crochet border will be what gives it some nice structure and makes it hold together quite nicely. Um, so we've reached the corner so we're just going to do two single crochets, two chains and two more single crochets into this chain space at the corner. And then single crochet across again. Once again, reach the corner, so two single crochets, two chains, and two more single crochets. And then I think we've only got one more stitch left in the corner here, and we'll just crochet into that. And then 
just the slip stitch into the first stitch to begin, to end, sorry. Um, so this is a bit tight to get into, I find, quite often. Um, so it just takes a bit of maneuvering to get it through into that. Um, this is when you need to be most careful about stabbing yourself because you are applying quite, I find I apply quite a lot of pressure to get through some of these stitches. Um, so just be sh be careful and once you start seeing that hook come through the other side, make sure you're not applying too much pressure. And just grab the yarn, pull it through and slip stitch. And then this final one on the end, I don't do a second slip stitch to secure it as I'm going to weave in these ends. So. I find that the second slip stitch isn't necessary. So I'll just pull up that loop after the first slip stitch and trim and pull that through. Awesome. So that we've got our little granny square all crocheted up now. Put this away. Sweet. Um, so I'll leave this end for a second and I'm just going to Make sure these final ones are nice and tight and then I'm going to trim these first. And as you can see, now we've only got one final end to weave in, um, which is why I really like the working of your loose ends method just because it makes finishing them so much quicker. And I, I don't think it detracts from it at all. You can't even see the ends in this. Um, occasionally you can see the ends from the front, but I think I've, if you uh, just try and work them in nicely, it's not too much of an issue. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so to weave in the ends, um, I will go a little bit into the single crochets and then mostly I work into these ones at the back. Show you on this one. So in this pink one, it is a visible way of weaving in, but because you only generally see the front of the motif and because the, the yarn is so fine, I don't think it detracts from it at all. Um, so I will push it down into these, um, into the row below and work it into these ones. So I will start from the front. So your crochet has a front and a back. So work with the front facing you to start with. Um, and I will find not the stitch that it's um, been, that it was last worked into, but the one beside it. So this is the one that we worked our slip stitch into to finish off the round. And then this is the one beside it. So I will put my put hook into the second one. So we've got ours in there and then I'll grab our working the tail and then I will pull it through. And then I'll pull it just firmly, not too tight. You don't want to distort the, distort it too much, but just tight enough that it sort of evens off that top edge. Oops. And then from here, I will weave it in just a couple more times into the top. Um, if you have a better method than this, then by all means um, weave in however you uh, see fit. This is just the method I use. Um, so I've pushed it into the next stitch beside that one and I'll push it backwards. And then I will go in one more time into the next stitch on the top and then pull it forwards. Just gently maneuvering it through. Um, and then I like to pull it tight just so it's not distorting the edge too much. And at this point I will turn my work over and I will find where um, the stitch at the bottom um, of the double crochet where it uh, corresponds to, um, which is closest, which I think is this one, which is the easiest one to get through. I apologize, this is kind of a convoluted way of weaving in your ends, but it's just the best way I've discovered to do mine. 
Um, so yeah, I will go through um, on the bottom of the single crochet and put my hook through there. And then I'll pull the working yarn through that. So from the front, you can't really tell where that end has gone too much. It has gone across a little bit, but it's not too bad from a distance, you would never notice. And then from here, I start working it into the round below. So I go into these, um, the legs of the stitches that I've gone around the chain spaces, and I just sort of put my hook underneath those, and then I grab the yarn and pull it through. Um, I just find this method a lot easier than using a needle just because my stitches are quite tight so I don't think it would be very easy with a needle, it would have to be quite a fine needle. And then so just working kind of three stitches at a time, I will just find those legs of those stitches in the pink and work my hook underneath so I've got three there, grab my yarn and then pull it through. and pull through that loop. Um, you will distort the shape of your crochet um, a little bit, but we will fix that once we've reaped in the ends. Um, and the next three, sometimes they're a little bit tricky to get under. Pull through the, the end. Oops, got caught. Yep. Just pull the green back up and then I'll do this sort of kind of halfway around the work just so I'm sure. Um, you can also sort of loop the stitch there, the end if you'd like. So if you just grab one stitch, pull it through and just pull up a loop and then you pull the end through that loop. You sort of create this sort of little knot there just to create some extra security. And then you just continue weaving it through. And that knot kind of gets hidden away under there anyway. And just kind of continue. So, another three more. And then I'll do one last three, just so it's not ending at the same spot that this, these last ends are. And I will also might go and trim them if they're not caught up in the next. I might actually trim those now, they're looking quite long. Let's get rid of a little bit of fluff, and then this end should capture it. So last three. And, and then before you trim it, just give it a nice little tug just to flatten out your work, just to make sure it's sitting all nice and flat. And then we'll trim this end. And then I don't personally block my makes. Um, I also don't stiffen them at all, but I do. Uh, my version of blocking, I guess, is I just use my hook and because we put two chain spaces up here, there is a little gap. So there's a little gap at every corner that has just the chain spaces. I like to just tug that gently to just create a nice sharp corner. So I'll do that with every corner. So just putting my hook into that space, just tugging up gently. And then again with my fingers, I'll just sort of manipulate it a little bit just to flatten it out. There we go. Our two little granny squares. Uh, you can also see that using the same colors but in a different order creates a very different 
piece as well. So I find that's quite fun to experiment with as well. Um, so I sent out a few question, a questionnaire on Instagram to see if you had any specific questions. Hopefully I have covered most of the things everyone asked. Uh, there is one specific um, question I just want to address just quickly, uh, which is if I harden the earrings at all. Um, I don't personally, I know people do. Um, I'm not sure, I've never looked into the techniques personally. I find that the thread I use along with keeping my stitches really tight just gives the um, crochet really nice structure and I don't really need to. Um, but if you were using a much uh, thinner yarn or more delicate yarn, uh, thread, sorry, uh, you may need, to, you may find that you do need to harden it. And I'm sure there is a lot of tutorials out there that would be able to tell you how to achieve that um, without ruining the look of your crochet. I know, um, I think Jenna Phipps once used, I think it was Mod Podge, uh, just watered down and um, used that on a brim of a, a crochet hat, a bucket hat, and that stiffened up, up really nicely, um, gave it a lot of nice structure. So maybe you could try that. Um, I also got a question of one, two strands or one, so I only ever use one strand. If you were using a, a cotton thread, you may be able to double them up um, to make it a bit thicker and give it a bit more structure. I covered how to weave in the ends, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it was effective enough of a tutorial of how, we, how I personally weave in my ends. It does depend um, uh, from project to project of how I weave them in, but essentially it's the same. I always just use a crochet hook and just loop them through the other stitches. Um, yeah, and I think I'm pretty sure I covered all the rest of them. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if I did miss anything um, and maybe I can make a follow-up video for any further questions or if I didn't cover anything accurately enough. I am not good at tutorials, I don't think. So please let me know if I can cover anything further, maybe also just covering it in a, in a, a reel or a short. Um, yeah, but thanks ever so much for watching. I will catch you all next time. See you later.